What's up guys, JV2017 here, and I'm bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. And this time we're going to look at damage resistance and the various factors that influence it in order to determine whether toughness, the endurance one perk, is truly worth taking. I really appreciated the reaction to my life giver versus endurance video that went up a few days ago. And this is a natural follow up to that. And who knows, this could potentially turn into an ongoing series here on the channel. So let me know if you like this format of video moving forward. Before we begin the video, I want to take this opportunity to promote the launch of my brand new channel called JV2017 Plays. There you'll find walkthroughs of the newest games, opinion based critiques, and really anything that's not in my traditional tips and tricks format. Click the link in the description below to check out my new channel and also click subscribe if you like what you see. Alright, onto the topic at hand today, first we need to establish how damage resistance works in Fallout 4. Similarly to player health, there is an in-game formula that kind of calculates your damage resistance and what effect that has on your character with mitigating damage, but I'm not going to share it in this video. I have left a really good resource and pretty much what I'm using to explain how this works in the description below, so you guys should check that out if you want a more in-depth look at how this works. But essentially, damage resistance can be described as a ratio of incoming damage to damage resistance that you actually have on your character, the statistic. And so the game basically calculates how much damage is coming in towards my character, how much damage is the character receiving versus what is the damage resistance on that character, and that is the output of the actual damage to the health of the player, if that makes sense. Keep in mind that damage resistance is different from previous Fallout games, especially Fallout 3 and New Vegas. It used to be just a straight percentage. That means if you saw 10 damage resistance, that means that your player you know, mitigated 10% of damage. It was just a one-to-one -one ratio between what you saw and that number, and then how much percentage of damage you would be avoiding as a result of that armor. That's way different in this game. There's a longer calculation like I just explained, and so we're going to talk about that right now. So I'm going to give you guys a few examples to help you wrap your heads around, you know, exactly what's going on here. So let's say there's a ghoul that's attacking you, the player, and this ghoul deals 100 damage. We're just going to keep the damage number at 100 to keep this as simple as possible. And let's say your character is new and has zero damage resistance, none. So there's really no ratio to speak of. There's a 0% damage reduction and the enemy, the ghoul, is dealing 100 damage to your character. Now let's say your character has 20 damage resistance and the same goal comes up and hits them for 100 damage. That's a 1 to 5 ratio. 20 over 100, simplified, is 1 to 5. And so when you get that ratio, that equals to a 10% damage reduction. And these are kind of, there's a whole formula like I explained, so they're not arbitrary, but just bear with me here. So there's a 10% damage reduction when you have 20 damage resistance and an enemy deals 100 damage to you. And once you meet that magical one to five ratio, that equals a 10% damage reduction, which means that enemy is only dealing 90 damage to you. So now let's increase your damage resistance to 50. So now there is a one to two ratio between how much damage resistance your character has to how much damage that you're receiving from an enemy. So again, you have 50 DR from whatever armor you're wearing, and then a ghoul attacks you for 100 damage. So that ratio there, that one to two ratio, pretty much spits out a 35% damage reduction, which means you're only receiving 65 damage from that 100 damage attack. So if you're a little lost and I don't blame you, I'm gonna try to visualize this for you. So let's just imagine a bullet coming towards your player and hitting your player's armor. Let's say that bullet has 100 damage. Let's say your armor represents 50 damage resistance. And so before it can go through and hit your character, it has to hit your armor. And so basically that 100 damage value has to hit the 50 damage resistance. And that's when this ratio comes into effect. So we have the one over two ratio because 50 over 100 is simplified to one over two. And that calculation pretty much gives you a 35% damage reduction from the normal 100 damage, which calculates to being only 65 damage. So that's the bullet going through your armor and actually piercing your character's flesh or whatever and actually hurting them. That calculates and comes out to be 65 damage actually received. So again, there's a lot more going on under the hood of the game, more than I understand, but I just want to give you guys kind of a brief look into how that works. And clearly you can tell if we increase that damage number, then that ratio goes down lower and lower and lower. So say you've got, you know, 100 damage resistance and you have a Myrlurk Queen hit you, you know, you're not going to avoid a lot of damage there because the Myrlurk Queen has a ton more damage than the damage resistance that you probably have. And so you could tell that damage resistance when you're fighting tougher enemies that hit harder is not going to matter as much. 
Now that we understand damage resistance to a certain degree, let's talk about toughness. And so toughness is the endurance one perk. And for each rank, it'll give you plus 10 damage resistance over five ranks. And those five ranks are attainable at level one, of course, the first rank, you don't have to be a certain level. And then you have to be level nine for rank two, level 18 for rank three, level 31 for rank four, and finally level 46 for rank five. Again, there's no initial investment, meaning that you don't have to put a certain amount of points into a category. It's an endurance one, which means you don't have to spend anything. You just have to start spending points into toughness in order to get this damage resistance. So again, you're only getting 10 damage resistance per rank over those five ranks over a long playthrough. Let's say that you take toughness at the first you know, available level that it becomes available with each rank over the course of a playthrough, you're getting 50 damage resistance over 46 levels incrementally over the course of a playthrough and if i'm being honest i don't think if you look at it from a long-term perspective that it has a ton of value because you're going to get a lot of armor upgrades that will upgrade your damage resistance very easily that way that's something you'll see but this just adds on top of it but let's circle back to our example and look at it from a short-term perspective at a lower level you know say you're taking a lot of damage your health is going down you want to mitigate some damage how can you do that how helpful is toughness so circling back to our example with the ghoul let's reduce the damage that the ghoul deals to only 50 damage so our ghoul is dealing 50 damage to our character and let's just say for example we have zero damage resistance obviously you know damage resistance isn't going to help us because we don't have any so we're going to receive 50 damage from that 50 damage attack that makes sense now let's say we take rank one of toughness so the initial rank of toughness is going to give us 10 damage resistance and as a result that's a one to five ratio between that damage so ghoul deals 50 damage you already have 10 damage resistance and so you're going to meet that one to five ratio which means there's a 10 percent damage reduction and you're only taking 45 damage 10 percent is a nice ratio right i mean it doesn't seem like a lot of our ghouls only dealing 50 damage because you only are you know avoiding five of that damage but it's 10 percent. so 10 percent seems like a nice ratio but as you seem to go up it kind of has a curve and I I don't know. I'm not a math guy. I'm okay at math, but I just don't specialize in it. I don't really enjoy it, but I'm sure there's a curve. If you were to kind of plot this on a graph, there's a huge curve where it goes upwards, where you really need to start stacking a ton of damage resistance to actually see increases in damage reduction. And so the point I'm trying to make here is that incrementally going over an entire playthrough, level one, nine, 18, 31, 46 for each rank of toughness, that's not really going to help your character in the long term as much as other options in the game. The advantage to this though is that there's again no initial investment so if you need a small boost early in the game hey toughness might be a great idea and you know you can see that you can easily get a 10 percent damage reduction if you go ahead and do this depending on the ratios and how the damage resistance formula turns out now let's talk about ballistic weave which is pretty much the popular alternative or you know maybe just the best option for damage resistance in the game and i'll tell you why right here so ballistic weave if you didn't know already is an armor mod that increases both your damage resistance and your energy resistance. So I didn't really clarify earlier in the video, damage resistance is your ballistic resistance. So this is to bullets, you know, weapons like that, just a normal gunpowder based bullet, maybe not gunpowder, but you get the point, bullets, right? Energy resistance is laser weapons. You know, if you're fighting gunners, if you're fighting synths, they're using laser guns against you, that's that kind of resistance. And if you have energy resistance, it'll mitigate that kind of damage. So Ballistic Weave is an armor mod that will provide both damage and energy resistance, and it has multiple ranks that you can upgrade that provide higher resistances. The first rank of Ballistic Weave provides 30 damage and energy resistance. The second rank is 45. Third rank is 65. Fourth rank is 90. And the last rank is 110 damage and energy resistance. If you compare the resistances that you gain from Ballistic Weave and Toughness, you know, level to level throughout a playthrough, let's say that you're able to either go for one option or the other very early in the game, you'll see that Ballistic Weave definitely gives you a lot more damage resistance and it gives you both kinds, damage and energy and so the problem with ballistic weave if you're comparing the two like this is the investment the investment early in the game is pretty heavy you need to do two to three hours of questing with the railroad you need to have armor as well and so you won't even be able to max it out until level 39 but that's also true of toughness but anyways with ballistic weave you're gonna have to do those things early in the game and if you don't know anything about ballistic weave and you want to know how to get it I have already made a video on that how to get ballistic weave and all that the best armor in the game and you can check the link below I left it in the description if 
if you guys are interested in that. Circling back, it's easy to say that Ballistic Weave is far and away better than Toughness. I think it is very generally. However, Toughness does have some early game viability. If you're fighting enemies that don't hit that hard, again, returning to the idea of the ratio and how that calculates, if you have enemies that aren't hitting that hard and you increase your damage resistance early, then that's good. You know, you are mitigating a good amount of damage. That's just going to help you in the early game a lot less than it will in the late game. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to give to you guys. Kind of like with my video a few days ago, Life Giver is going to help you out more in the early game from level one to probably 20 or 30. And then, you know, in the late game, you'll see that over time, putting points into endurance or ballistic weave in this video is the better long term investment. You won't look back and think that you wasted points. You know, those will be very worth your time. And then putting points into armor instead of endurance gives you some other advantages. And additionally, you can put two items can have ballistic weave on you at once. Once. You can be wearing a battered fedora and a dirty army, army fatigue underneath your armor and then still have additional resistances over that armor. The character that I'm using in this gameplay has almost 300 damage resistance and she's not wearing power armor. That's a crazy astronomical kind of number in this game and that's the power of Ballistic Weave. So I'd like to hear from you guys. Is toughness worth it in the early game? Do you think it's still worth it after watching this video? You know, or should you just go for Ballistic Weave? Is that a smarter option in the long run? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. All right, guys, today we looked at damage resistance and toughness and Ballistic Weave in Fallout 4. And next time we'll cover more Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for more unique weapon guides, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.